Sergeant Mike Abdeen and Deputy Sharif Morsi run the Muslim Community Affairs Unit for the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. It's a groundbreaking community outreach and law enforcement education program. Assalamu alaikum. How are you doing, sir? We are hoping uh, to have this uh, whole project complete by uh, March. And in the post 9 11 world, where effective communication is vital, it's a national and international model for community policing. I was born in Jerusalem uh, and grew up in Jerusalem. Uh, went to uh, middle school and high school there. I've always wanted to do something with uh, law enforcement and government work. And uh, when I became a U.S. citizen, I thought this is an opportunity for me to join and uh, try it out and give back to the country. And I've been doing it for the last 20 years now. So um, it, it started as a curiosity and then ended up being a career for me. About four years ago, Sheriff Baca asked me to develop a community outreach program um, to connect with the Muslim community in Los Angeles. So uh, we s I started as a regular outreach, kind of uh, develop trust and relationship with the Muslim community in Los Angeles. And um, eventually that outreach program developed to become a whole Muslim community affairs unit with educational programs and diplomacy. Did you know we're coming here today? Yes, sir. You did? Okay. What did they tell you? Muslim 101, is that what they called it? <laughs> Muslim 101. What's the problem there? <laughs> is there such thing as Muslim 101? What is a Muslim? Well, we'll get to this. The purpose of us being here is education. And this is just an example of the education needed among law enforcement. There's no such thing as Muslim. There is Islam 101 because Muslim is like Christian, like saying Christian 101 or Jew 101. They are young and uh, some of the issues that happened 9-11 and um, it might sound for us, we're more familiar with it. But for them, it's, uh, it's history. So one of them were 10, 11 years old, probably, when 9-11 happened. The reason we're here today is to talk to you about uh, uh, law enforcement interaction with the Muslim community. Uh, it's a program, it's an outreach program that the Sheriff's Department started about four years ago. And uh, it has grown to become a model uh, for the nation. And now it's even going further, going international. They always wonder, well, who are Arabs, what's the Middle East? They didn't know the difference between uh, Arab American or Pakistani or Indian or South Asian. So I became kind of a, a source for education when they come across something cultural that will help them educate them, teach them. And then I realized there is a gap here. We really need to do something about it. So I developed a, uh, a training program for our department, cultural diversity and awareness training, that now became a program that is taught to all our new recruits at the academy. The two topics that we're going to cover is community policing and cultural competency for government and law enforcement. You guys think community policing is important to this? In what way? Uh, well, they, they get to know you. You know, they, they trust you more. They feel they can come and talk to you more. Maybe they can help you do some work of your own. Right. These are the key words there, trust. How about cultural competency? Why is that important for law enforcement? Why is it important for law enforcement to understand different cultures? You want to know your community and know who you're dealing with so you can know how to interact with different communities and try to communicate. It's going to help you as a police officer, as a public servant, to understand them. I was born in Egypt, uh, in Cairo, Egypt, and I came, uh, my whole family came when I was seven years old, moved to Southern California. And in my senior year in college, I did a couple of ride-alongs with the Sheriff's Department. I saw the work that they were doing, um, saw what the deputies were doing on a daily basis and the kind of challenges that they faced, and I fell in love with it. Teaching how to interact with the Muslim community itself is fairly new. We've been doing it the last couple of years uh, because of all the issues that uh, the hate incidents are happening with the Muslim community. But in general, um, police in most academies across the country are teaching and emphasizing the importance of trust uh, in the community. We go to uh, events, uh, talk at centers, mosques, and the whole idea is to build trust and get them used to our uniform. Assalamu alaikum. How are you, sir? Uh, Mike Abdeen and Sharif Al Morsi. Which window was broken? This one? The last one? 
I was not here. You were okay. So is this the, the, the prayer area now? Yeah, because we can get the permit for the whole team, but we don't have enough for the parking. Oh. This is model of outreach because the Department of Homeland Security decided to design an outreach program. They looked at us as a best practice model and we partnered with them, um, share with them our experience with the community, how to develop contacts and trust with the leadership. So when we go, we try to make it relaxed. I mean, we are still cops, we keep our safety, you know, we know what we're doing, but uh, you, you kind of tone it down a little bit. Thank you oh, very much job. for coming, oh, and uh, we appreciate to see you more. Sure, sure. Thank you. And uh, especially, I talked to uh, uh, Lieutenant Valdez and uh, Lieutenant Riaz yes. that 9.30 in the evening and 5 o'clock in the morning. They see that the threat is real and it affects them, and if, God forbid, something else happens in the United States, they will be the first to be affected. So now they are really... Uh, actively um, asking how they could get involved, how could they help eliminate the threat, and uh, we are receiving some good information sometimes. We sent out a bulletin last week to all of our stations about the upcoming uh, events, and uh, same issues just brought. This is the success for us, really, is for them to provide us information that protects them and the country in general, protect everybody as a community. The community, if they trust you, they will call you, they will talk to you, and we have experienced this in our work. Um, and it's the first step to identify terrorist activities because they are the ones that will be calling you, telling you that something is suspicious, not happening because they trust you, you build that relationship with them. We had questions. Is it a Muslims pray five times a day? Now, do you guys do that as well? You guys pray five times a day? Or? Yeah, no, we didn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> we were not uh, real, complete uh, practicing Muslims. Um, but we know how to do it. Uh, we know how to fast and how to pray. When we go to the mosque, we do it like everybody else. So we respect them. We respect the community. You know, just because you're Muslim doesn't mean you're very, very devoted to your faith. I mean, uh, some Christians only go to church on Easter and Christmas, exactly. right? I mean, it's, it's the same for any other faith. People have this misconception that Muslims are super, you know, strong in their faith, very religious. Some Muslims don't fast during Ramadan, they don't pray. Um, you know, it doesn't make them less of a person. They have different interpretations of how, what makes them a better Muslim than others. The idea is to spread the education and uh, it's a good model, it's working for us. It might not work the whole thing for other areas in the country, but at least they could take components of it, see what works for them and adjust it um, to serve their communities, regardless of what background or ethnic background or countries they come from.